Meta teases their new ultra-wide field of view headsets. Sharp might have the VR controller solution we've all been looking for, and FreeAim are trying to strap tiny little VR treadmills to your feet for improved VR immersion. All that and more coming up in this episode of The Virtual Lowdown. What's going on, virtual friends? Welcome to the Virtual Lowdown, the show where I bring you the latest and most exciting news going on in the VR world. My name's Pete, and in this episode, we're gonna be going through some exciting new tech that could be coming to VR. So kicking things off with our first story, Meta has revealed the new ultra-wide field of view headset prototypes. So Meta's Reality Labs has revealed two new headset prototypes that are focused on an ultra-wide field of view, as well as a compact design. So these headsets are aiming for a massive 180 degrees horizontal field of view and 120 degrees vertical field of view, which is a huge increase over most of the consumer headsets available on the market. For reference, the MetaQuest 3 only has 110 degrees of horizontal field of view, so these prototypes are a huge improvement in terms of field of view when compared to other consumer headsets currently available. And this means that when users are in the headset, they will get a much expanded visible area while in VR. But despite this massive boost in field of view, the headset prototypes remain surprisingly compact, and that is largely due to some advancements in the optical design. So the first prototype model is called the Flamera, I believe. Interesting naming choice. Uh, but this one will use a light field camera array to basically achieve a more realistic and natural looking pass through when in mixed reality. The second prototype model named Mirror Lake uses pancake optics and a unique display system to achieve a ultra wide field of view while retaining a thin and lightweight form factor. Now, both of these headsets are designed for virtual reality and mixed reality, so we can still enjoy the seamless blend of virtual reality and real reality. So it is important to note that neither of these headsets are guaranteed to see the light of day beyond, you know, what we're discussing today. They are both just prototypes and, uh, you know, it's kind of meta experimenting with what is potentially possible with technology currently available. So what's really interesting about this to me is, um, like, if you've been following me on this channel for a little while now, then for starters, thank you very much. Drop me a, drop me a little comment quickly to let me know that you actually exist. But yeah, apart from that, um, I've been talking for quite a while now about how I feel that FOV is a seriously underrated element in VR when it comes to improving immersion. I feel like a lot of people focus on trying to improve the graphics, which don't get me wrong, is awesome. Having like super sharp HD graphics while in VR is like really cool, but VR is massively about immersion, and I feel like Meta is, with these prototypes, addressing two huge factors that are currently barriers to uh, improved immersion. The first one is obviously that wide field of view, so removing those black borders around your vision that make it feel like you're constantly wearing goggles while in VR, I think that is by itself like a massive uh, boost to your immersion if you can just remove those borders. And secondly, is that compact and lightweight form factor. So not feeling like you're actually wearing like a massive headset, which you are, but having both that combination of removing the visual borders, as well as removing the kind of feeling of that weight on your head, I feel like that combination could be absolutely massive for immersion in VR. And I really hope Meta continues kind of pushing this and we see some of this make it to some uh, consumer headsets later down the line. I would be personally very happy if we got a new headset that had this massive field of view, was extra lightweight and compact. And uh, if the graphics remained the same as the Quest 3, that would not actually bother me. But let me know your thoughts about this in the comments because I'm very curious to see uh, what you guys feel about field of view versus other elements of VR. Like what should the focus be for the next headset? And I'm not talking software because that's a whole different story. I'm just strictly talking hardware here. Our second story of the day could be the start of something very exciting later down the line. And that is Sharp's prototype VR haptic controllers. 
Now, what's so exciting about a VR controller, you might be asking? Well, just take a look at the image, and I think that should speak enough for itself. Now, what's immediately awesome about this is it brings some exciting haptic feedback to your finger tracking inputs. So the company have actually said that the haptic feedback is able to replicate certain types of kind of touch sensations. So the controllers use multi-segmented tactile elements. Don't worry, I don't really know what that means either, but those are in the fingertips, which I, basically my understanding is that it's not just like a single motor vibrating there, it's like multiple different motors vibrating in the fingertips that when uh, done correctly can replicate certain sensations of touch. For example, by varying the vibration patterns in the fingertips, you could make something in VR feel rough versus smooth. Now, before you get too excited about this, Sharp has clearly stated that they haven't managed to make this kind of replicate real world touch. However, through various different like experimentations with different vibration patterns, they have managed to replicate a number of various different uh, sensations in VR. So it's definitely, it's a first step in the right direction. They've said that rather than keeping the product in-house and trying to perfect it, they uh, will potentially be releasing it kind of a little bit early to some consumers, most likely in Japan at the start. And uh, from there, they will use user feedback to kind of tweak and adjust how the uh, tactile feedback works. These controllers will come in both a left and a right pair and will uh, basically function like regular controllers, including thumbsticks and buttons and all that good stuff. Uh, but Sharp has said that uh, unfortunately they won't offer as, as quite delicate and fine-tuned finger tracking that uh, some other glove-based controller devices offer. And also you won't get any temperature or force feedback, again, like some of the other glove-based uh, controllers. Currently, it is unclear how Sharp intends to track these controllers, but uh, there was mentions of using potentially some third-party mounted devices, which I'd rather not use, but uh, if that's the only way, then so be it. Unfortunately, the prototype renders that you're seeing on screen are basically the only visuals we currently have for this product, and Sharp has recently closed the pre-registration on their website where the devices were listed for about 680 US dollars. And our final story for today, the Free Aim VR shoes have reached their Kickstarter goal. So this is one that put a little bit of a smile on my face because I remember quite a quite a while back stumbling upon uh, some YouTube videos from Free Aim who were kind of demonstrating their progress on this prototype. And um, this was quite a while ago. They had a lot to work on, but I saw the potential in this product and I still do see the potential in this product. They're, they're quite a quirky one. So essentially what these are is they are like mini treadmills that you wear on your feet as shoes. And as you walk, you basically stay in the same place because the uh, kind of tracks, the wheel, the treads on the shoes are motorized to counteract your walking movements. So as you walk forward, they, like a treadmill, basically keeps you in place and translates that movement into VR movement. They use omnidirectional wheels in the shoes so that you can move in any direction that you want and you will stay in one spot so you don't have to worry about like running, you know, into your window or into your TV or into a, a fellow human. These shoes are directly compatible with Steam VR as well as a bunch of other VR games and experiences, so it's not gonna you're not gonna have a hard time like finding somewhere to use these. And the reason I really saw the potential in this product is because unlike some other currently available solutions for movement in VR, uh, these are really small. Like you don't have to have this massive treadmill type rig set up in your household, which realistically is not realistic for a lot of people. Instead, you have these kind of reasonable sized treadmill shoes that you can wear. They're more portable. Uh, you don't have to have them like a dedicated area in your house to have them. And uh, they achieve basically the same thing. So I'm really happy to see that these guys are getting the recognition that they deserve and super excited to see how the technology develops down the line. So FreeAim is offering two variations of these shoes, which they say will be able to be used in a space as small as 1.5 meters. The first model is their VR Shoes Advanced, which I believe is the one that I'm more familiar with. Uh, and this one features like an automatic repositioning technology. Essentially, the wheels that are omnidirectional can uh, prevent the user from straying out of the designated play zone. 
The second model is the VR Shoes Lite model. Now, this one does require a bit more of a setup and, uh, in my opinion, loses a bit of its appeal. But uh, this one basically doesn't have that auto-correction technology in it. So uh, instead, what you've got is this kind of fold-out frame that you have around yourself to ensure that you remain within your designated play area. Like I said, it's the first one for me that's like super interesting. Just no need for any frames and being able to just be confident that wherever you are in VR, you don't need a huge amount of space and you're not going to wander off. Now, beyond the February 2026 fulfillment date for their Kickstarters, the uh, company has not announced an official release date for this product. But looking at their Kickstarter, the company has hinted at some potential pricing with the VR Shoes Lite Edition going for £799 and the uh, Advanced Edition going for about £1,049. The shoes have been tested with a number of games on the Quest, including VR Chat and Walking Dead Saints and Sinners 1 and 2. Uh, among other games. However, Free Aim have said that they are continuing to test other games on the Quest uh, as well as on a potential Android XR platforms. And in case you want to find out a few more details about this product, I'll put some specifications up on the screen right now. And that is going to be it for today's tech-focused edition of the Virtual Lowdown. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Lots of exciting new VR tech coming hopefully later down the line. Let me know if you could choose just one of the products discussed in today's video to come out tomorrow to arrive at your doorstep, which one would you be picking up? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like while you're on your way down there. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this and you want to see more of this kind of content from me, then make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future news updates. Thanks so much for watching if you made it this far and I'll see you guys in the next one.